Welcome back to Nickelodeon. Just call me code of classic lesson known classics. This is number 2243 and double shot number 2137. I have an X-Men trait and a trait from Valiant. First up we have is Immortal X-Men Volume 2 by Karen Gillian. Here's something interesting about these issues. By the way, this... This, is, this book contains issues 7 through 10, like the first trade contains only the first 6. Okay, there is a reason for this. And the reason is pure and simple. Issue 10 was released back in March. Yes. Actually, it was January just this year. But here's something interesting, though. The most recent issue came out just last month. Now you're thinking, why the heck would Marvel put the book on hiatus for a few months? The reason? Sins of Sinister. Because this book leads into that. Yeah, pretty much this is the issue's nutshell. We have Karen Gillen in the writing here. With artwork by uh, Lucas Warner. Because there's basically most of everything in here. 7, 9, and 10. And Michelle Bunny, Bunny does issue number 8. The cover art is done by Mark Brooks. Now... First in the trailer, we have stuff from the Reign of X stuff here with Nightcrawler, who... Nightcrawler, for some reason, Karen Gillian, in this book, writes him like he's Wolverine. Yes, because first the first issue we have in here is Nightcrawler issue, where Nightcrawler's got a full beard. He basically is acting different than usual. No happy-go-lucky. No, basically, he's going to be like, basically, Wolverine. It's like, basically, Karen Gillian wanted Wolverine in this book, and he wrote Nightcrawler that particular way, so... He even calls... Charles Xavier Chuck as an annoyance. And the thing with this issue, with issue 7, oh boy, issue 7. Issue 7 is a tie-in to Judgment Day. Yep, Judgment Day. Where, get this, they killed off Captain America in this issue and he's resurrected thanks to the Krakoa Resurrection Protocols. And if you're curious though, it's only for one issue. Yeah, seriously. They have this for one freaking issue. Where, yeah, let's have a Judge Day tie in this book for one issue. And, like, what's the reason for this? I don't know. Yeah. But it is interesting though, of course, you said with more in here. But in the case of issue number 8, this is called The Curious Case of Dr. X's Miss Sinister. It's a flashback issue of Destiny and Mystique in the past. Yep. That is mostly put exactly what this is. It's them in the past. Very interesting idea. Nothing to do with Kokoa stuff. It's just basically him in the past. Just how... It's basically, you can kind of think of it as how Mystique and Destiny first met Miss Sinister. And the issue 9, the X Lives of Mora, the 6th? No, oh, yeah, 6. 9, simply put, is this. This is an issue focused on, well, Katie, well, Kate Pride, as she calls herself. And at the end of this issue, they kill off four characters at the end of this issue. Four people confirmed to be dead. They kill off. They have Hope Summers kill. Looks like to be, uh. You think Miss Henderson, but nope. But four people die in this issue. Who are they? We have. Miss Henderson is going nuts here. And then we have Xavier, Exus, Hope, and Emma Frost. Then by the end of the issue, they die. But Kate's still alive. And then the very next issue happens. Also, for some reason, Beast is here. Now, we also have Dark Beast in here. Now, this is a bit inconsistent how Beast is written over the pages of Wolverine X-Force. Where Beast is a dick, and he's like the main villain of the run. Here, for some reason, he's been like traditional beast. Also, for some reason, he's got a pot belly. Yeah, for some reason, he's been lazy with his workout stuff. So, yeah, even he's shocked to see all this death here. 
And then basically they all get resurrected. Except these four have been tainted. By Mr. Sinister. Yes, these four have been tainted. Because... Well, also in the issue, we actually have this Destiny Mystique, and they, they just resign. And until the end of the issue, that Xavier is under the control of Mr. Sinister. And this leads into the Sinister crossover. Yep. So, basically, what Mr. Sinister did before he killed them, he tainted their DNA. Yes, they have been tainted. And this leads into the Sins the, like I mentioned, the Sins of Sinister crossover, which something Karen Gillen built in for quite a while. And if you're curious... Does he write the whole story? Excuse me. Um. Well, let me answer the question. I think he writes most of it. I don't think he writes the whole thing. Let's see. Because I think currently this is the only book he's working on right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... For the uh, scene sensor, he writes the opening issue, he writes the immoral X Men, and he writes the finale. That's it. He writes one of many series, immoral X Men. Now, Storm on the Brother of the Mutants, that's done by Al Ewing. Nightcrawlers, Cy Spurrier. No, seriously, Cy Spurrier. Yeah, those are the three writers Karen Gillian, Cy Spurrier, and Al Ewing. But uh, he does read the finale, and that leads until the events of issue number 11, which basically just gets fixed. Don't worry about that. It seems like though Karen Gillian just didn't want to wait to undo something he just did. Either that or probably editorial told him to undo it, because he, they probably did not want Charles Xavier, Hope Summers, Exodus, and Emma Frost to be gone for a long period. In the case of Emma Frost and Xavier, these two happy around Exodus, it just seems kind of weird. But yeah. But that was really good. I give it a 9 out of 10. It's really good. Next up we have is... The Book of Jeff. From the page... From the from the company of Valiant... Inter, Valiant Entertainment. This is a 4 issue mini series that by Robert Venditti. Which makes this book the first... Uh, first book outside of his... Outside of his EXO books I've actually reviewed. Now, this book does have serious tie-ins, which he does have tie-ins in particular. Now, here's the thing that comes around with Diddy. All the books he did for, for Valiant, in my opinion, are really good. Mostly put for this book, the, the heroes of this book are the following. By the way, Venditti does all four issues, with Robert Gill doing pretty much all the artwork, with Doug Birchwell. The stars of this book are Bloodshot. Yeah, Bloodshot's near. Uh, so here you start. The Eternal Warrior, Tama the, the Geomancer, x men of War, Ninjack, Livewire, Colonel Jamie Kepshaw, and of course Bloodshot's here too. But he doesn't really play a big role in this book. He does play a role in his own tie-in. Mostly put, it deals with the Eternal Warrior. That's mostly put exactly what this is. And it's a mini-series where it involves the group Unity. Yep, Unity. And if you're curious though, did he write that book? Nope, that was Matt Knott. He wrote that book. And it's mostly put, you kind of think of it as this book is just, oh, it's basically Unity versus the Eternal Warrior. We also have a character from the pages of Shadow Man named Dark Rook. Yeah, he's in the pages of Shadow Man. And also put, it just, it's them battling death. That's literally what this book is. And of course, deal with the Geomancer. And Punk Mumbo makes appearance. He has always got to love seeing the beautiful Punk Mumbo. Yeah. But this book is just really good. Yeah. Uh, by far one of Valiant's best miniseries ever done, in my opinion. Well, under the current stuff, which is only around for 11 years now. And I still keep rid of the fact that they should put out more stuff. This book is really good. Give this book a 10 out of 10. It's just really good and fun. Yep. And it's all about predicting death, but uh, there's actually a series of tie-ins this one. Yes, there is a series of tie-ins. Uh, one-shot tie-ins. Excuse me, thank you. Really? There is one-shot tie-ins, this one. Yes, there is. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, Book of Death, which is an event, uh, the, it actually has four one-shots attached to it. There is the Fall of Bloodshot, Ninjak, Harbinger, and X-Men of War. Yeah, for some reason, they actually have the one-shots in a separate trade. There is, like, actually the whole thing. Yeah, apparently there was also a realtor incentive called Book of Death Ledge Geomancer. It's not done by Robin Diddy's by Fred Van Lynn. Now you might be thinking, is the EXO one shot, is that done by Robin Venditti? Uh, yep, he does do that one. Who does Bloodshot? Jeff Lemire, who was right at that point in time. Harbinger. Joshua Dark. I think he rolled. I think it was a book published at that point. Ninja. It's probably Matt Knott. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, that's the much I say with these two trades. They're both pretty good here. But I think Book of Death is really good. It's a little more, a little more interesting to read. But just really fun. Yep. And you might be curious though. How much of this universe have I reviewed? Not a lot per se. I'd probably say I review about 10% of the release. Uh, I would say the moat, the, the only the only character from the current Valiant that I've viewed everything for him, like all of the solo work, is Ninjak. He's the only one. Because Ninjak currently has nothing but else to release. Yeah, for some reason, um, the uh, Jeff Parker book ended. It like it just stopped after only releasing four issues. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, apparently it's going to continue in Ninja Super Killers. Yeah, so. I own pretty much everything related to Ninjak. Mostly anyways. Uh, well, the only thing else review for the character Ninjak is stuff from the original volume continuity. But... Now you might be curious though. What books are being published by them but are not coming out issues right now? One is Archer Armstrong Forever, which for some reason uh, is currently on hiatus after releasing five issues. There is Armorclads, which this one actually has been concluded. There is a Book of Shadows, which one, this one still has not been finished yet. Yeah, they've only released like four issues. I think it's about four comics, I'd say. Yeah, there is a current X book published right now called Exo Unconquer. Yeah, that's the only art book published right now. Yeah, they just released issue two like not that long ago. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the last book they published stopped publishing after only nine issues. No, I'm not kidding about that. And that book was done by Dennis Hopeless. Yeah, but there's still more violence to cover. But the only thing for mini series to cover aside from this one. Let's see, there was the Faith comic, uh, the first line for Faith, there is uh, 4000 AD, that's two, Bloodshot USA, I believe it covered the first Armor Rangers miniseries, uh, 
I think I've reviewed the first two books for Divinity. Uh, the first the first couple of Dr. Mirage books. Yes. So, some mostly a lot of miniseries. The only ongoing thing I've fully reviewed is Ninjak. Yep. Uh, Shadow Man and I have reviewed one volume so far. That is the original volume. Yep. Yeah, the original volume for Shadow Man, I have reviewed the whole thing of that one. Yeah, the yeah the very first volume they ever released for the character. Yep, I have reviewed the whole thing for that one. The ending I've only reviewed the first the first couple first trade for. But volume four, I, re I reviewed that one. Mm -hmm. Let me most recent one, I have reviewed the whole thing of this one too. So I've reviewed two volumes for Shadow Man, but not the whole thing of Shadow Man per se, not like Ninjak. But yeah, that much I'll say with two books. We're good. Okay, so that's the episode review. Uh, next up is going to be um, well, I thought we'd get time to do but right now is no time right now, so save for tomorrow for case closed. And the uh, probably two more comic corners coming tomorrow. Okay, next video. And of course some uh, anime, which not only case closed, there's also Demon Slayer, Eden Zero, One Piece. So about four anime. I'm hoping to work on some Doctor Who, but who knows? Okay, next video. Bye.